गुड आफ्टरनून मैम मैम बाय द प्लांट्स नो वी आर गेटिंग द ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम द प्लांट्स बट द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड दैट वी आर एक्सेलिंग वी आर गिविंग आउट फ्रॉम वेयर वी आर गेटिंग दैट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड मैम दैट आर मिक्स्ड इन एयर no if you are exhaling it that means how it can be mixed with air it is being uh, it is being produced in your own body so when we inhale the air maximum amount of oxygen is present there right that oxygen uh, reaches our blood through the lungs okay so we are inhaling the air through the nostril the passage i have showed you in the previous class this is the passage so through the nose it will go to the nasal cavity then through pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchi bronchiole it will reach the lungs in the lungs there are alveoli from the alveoli it will enter our blood stream it means what it means oxygen that we have inhaled okay yes ma'am so it will go to the blood stream and blood will carry it to all the parts of our body so now when uh, all the parts means the cells right the cells make our body the cells make the tissues and tissues make the organ okay so it will reach the oxygen will reach to all, each and every cell in our body now inside the cell what will happen inside the cell this reaction will happen glucose is present there from where do we get the glucose from if, uh, from the food that we eat okay the simplest form of the food is the glucose okay so glucose is already present there in the cell now the oxygen that we have taken we have inhaled that oxygen will react with this glucose that is present in our cell and as a result of this reaction what will be produced carbon dioxide will be produced a little amount of water will be produced and energy will be produced now what is our purpose to conduct this reaction our main purpose purpose is to extract the energy to produce the energy why we need energy to stay alive okay without energy we can't stay alive for our every kind of work we do as i have told you in this way that for talking for walking for moving our hands for blinking our eyes for each and every kind of movement or work that we do we need energy and this is how we get the energy we get the energy from the oxygen and the glucose so as a result of this reaction and this reaction happens it occurs inside our cells so blood gives oxygen to the cells and from where blood gets the oxygen blood gets it from the lungs and lungs get it when we inhale the air okay now after respiration when we will use up this oxygen to make energy we will use this energy for performing our daily life activities now this carbon dioxide is very much toxic we must exhale it we must give out it give it out of our body so this carbon dioxide is exhaled and we get this carbon dioxide from the cells because after cellular respiration carbon dioxide will be produced in the cells now cells will give this carbon dioxide to blood and blood will carry it to lungs lungs will push it out of our body through our windpipe nasal cavity and nostrils so from where we get the carbon dioxide that we are exhaling from the cells as a result of cellular respiration carbon dioxide is produced inside our own cells okay and when we will finally exhale it or when we will give it out in the environment what will happen with this carbon dioxide you have learnt it in previous class once we will exhale this carbon dioxide what will happen to it the green plants will take it to perform photosynthesis this yes, is how the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide will be maintained yes rito broto you want to tell me anything yes ma'am for the food making process yes they need carbon dioxide and we need oxygen so we will give them the carbon dioxide and they will give us the oxygen okay 
oxygen is also produced in the plant body as a result of photosynthesis after photosynthesis oxygen is produced and they release it into the environment that oxygen that the green plants are releasing to the environment we are taking it and where after taking in the oxygen we are using it to make the energy and in that process carbon dioxide is also produced which is not good for our body so we give it out in the environment and the green plants will then take the carbon dioxide so animals and plants are interdependent on each other this is how together plants and animals balance the between the oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration in our environment okay so yes we i'm quickly showing you one short video on that just a second so that you can understand i hope you will understand after watching this video okay can you all see the screen yes ma'am yes, yes ma'am ma okay so just yes, watch this video after uh, watching this video if you don't even after that if you don't understand this process then i will then you ask me see what happens this is how the air or the no, 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 oxygen no. enters our body through the nostrils then nasal cavity then pharynx larynx okay so here you can see they are entering through the nostrils and to, through the nasal cavity then they will pass through the trachea you can see this windpipe it is called trachea and you can also see it is it's a ring like structure cartilaginous rings you have learnt it in your book right cartilaginous rings so they are made up of the trachea is made up of that from here the air passes through the bronchi before entering the lungs now which one is the bronchi here let's see can you see the bronchi where the trachea has divided into two parts this one yes ma'am so these are the bronchi when it is only one single uh, uh, wind pipe what we call that is made up of cartilaginous rings that will be called the trachea but when it will be divided into two parts it will be called the bronchi and these two parts will enter two lungs now let's see what is next what comes next so now inside the lungs what are these the bronchioles and my alveoli bronchioles are also there and alveoli are also there so yes, here you can see okay so here you can see so these are the bronchioles these pipes these branched pipes you can see these pipes are further branched into narrower branches so from the bronchi these have came out these branches have came out so these narrow uh, much more narrow branches these are called the bronchioles now to the end of the bronchioles what are attached the alveoli you can see the circular balloon like inflated structures these are the alveoli now uh, from inside the alveoli is complete the alveoli these are completely hollow why so that they can be filled with air okay and around this alveoli you can see in blue color some i am drawing it with uh, yellow so that you can understand can you see this blue color net like structure yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma what yes, are these can you can you tell me what are these blue color net like structure that are ma'am the oxygen the blood these are actually uh, blood capillaries okay yes ma'am ma'am so through which blood flows like veins and arteries ma'am they are deoxygenated blood blue color they are indicating deoxygenated blood and at the same time you can see here some red, red colored uh, yes ma'am they, they are oxygenated blood they are oxygenated blood yes so the red colored um, uh, red colored structures that you can see here they are the arteries arteries and veins arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood okay so th th that one you will read in standard 9 or standard 8 now let's see what are these balloon like structures these are the alveoli so from the alveoli the oxygen will be so when the oxygen will reach through this bronchi uh, bronchiole to this alveoli 
Now from the alveoli, the blood that is present inside these blue and red colored structures called veins and arteries, the blood present in there, they will get the oxygen. So let's see what happens next. Okay, so here these are the bronchioles, bron uh, to the bronchioles, the balloon-like structure that are attached, you can see these are called the alveoli. Okay, you can see it is uh, clearly indicated here. These are the alveoli. Now you can see here that some tiny structures are coming out from the alveoli and they're going into the alveoli. That are going into the alveoli, they are oxygen and that are coming out of the alveoli and entering the bronchioles they are carbon dioxide. Now these are the ribs and this, this is the rib cage. Just below the rib cage, there is the diaphragm. You have learned about it. Now just see where it is situated. Inside the rib cage, the two lungs are there. And what is this? Now let's see. This is actually the blood capillary, either vein, or artery. So in this particular part, it is the artery because it will carry the oxygen. So this is the tube-like structure or pipe-like structure called artery. And this is the wall of alveoli, okay? This is the wall of the alveoli. Now we are zooming in this part. So the oxygen is present in the alveoli. And through this pipe, the blood is flowing. These are the red blood cells, you can see. These are the red blood cells, okay? So now what will happen? From this, this blue colored part, this is the alveoli, okay? So from the alveoli, the oxygen will enter the blood present in this artery, okay? And the oxygen will bind to the hemoglobin present in this red blood cell or RBC. And it will make what? When oxygen will bind with the hemoglobin, what will it make? I'm oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin. So let's see how it makes oxyhemoglobin. Okay. So now the oxygen is present in the alveoli. Now it will enter from alveoli to the bloodstream. See. So now the oxygen is carried by the white red blood cells. Sorry. And see how. From the blood, it is discharged into the cells. And from the cells, now the carbon dioxide enters the blood and then to the alveoli. You can see through the blood, the carbon dioxide also at the same time enters the alveoli. Now this carbon dioxide will go through, to the, through the reverse process. Now in every kind of animals, why elephant is showing, they are showing elephant? Because they are showing that Hemoglobin absorbs oxygen from air in the lungs and carries it to the tissue over the body. See, oxygen and this is hemoglobin. They bind together to make the oxyhemoglobin inside the red blood cell, okay? Only in the red blood cell because hemoglobin is present only inside the red blood cell. So now you can see all the red blood cells are flowing. Now, at the same time, when oxygen when the blood will carry the red blood cell that contains hemoglobin, it will take the oxygen from the alveoli, it will make oxyhemoglobin, the blood will carry the oxyhemoglobin, and finally, it will discharge or deliver the oxygen to the cells. At the same time, here in, in this particular picture, you can see that the same red blood cell is also taking the, at the time when it is delivering the oxygen to the cell, at the same time, it is also taking the carbon dioxide from the cell. See, carbon dioxide plus H2O, it makes HCO3 minus and H plus. It is also taking the carbon dioxide from the cell. Now, what is happening? See, the carbon dioxide will also be carried by the blood. The air enters a human body through the nostril, it moves through the throat. 
and then uh, to the trachea. From the trachea, it enters the bronchi and goes to the lungs. And in the reverse direction, the carbon dioxide will move or will go to, to, to the reverse direction. Is it clear how this gaseous exchange occurs between the alveoli yes, and the blood and between yes, the blood and the cell? Okay. So this is the main concept. It must be clear. Yes, if there is any doubt, you can tell me. Now let's see what is the next topic that is uh, written in your book. This activity I have told you, I think, with the bells are and uh, they are, we, will, we have used the balloons. We yes, have ma attached yes, a rubber sheet. I have told you yes, this one. Yes, yes ma'am. We are doing activity. Let's perform two. So what is the what is the aim of this activity? The aim of this activity is to show that carbon dioxide is given out during the breathing. So the air that we are exhaling, that air contains carbon dioxide. So how we will prove it? For that, we will have to perform this experiment. So what are the materials that we need? We will need two beakers that are filled with lime water and two straws. That's it. So two beakers, we will have to fill them with lime water and we need two straws. What is the method? What we will have to do here is to take some freshly prepared lime water in the beaker. Now keep the straws in both the beakers and leave the first beaker with the lime water uh, that undisturbed and blow gently through the straw for a few minutes. What will you observe? You will observe that the lime water in the second beaker turns milky. And what is the conclusion? The conclusion is the exhaled air contains carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide gas turns the lime water milky. So we conclude that the carbon dioxide is produced uh, or it is present in the exhaled air. Simply take two beakers in both the beakers, fill, fill both the beakers with equal amount of lime water. The first beaker, you keep it aside. Don't do anything. Don't touch it. Keep it undisturbed. Now to the second beaker, what you will do? You will just um, uh, blow the air, what you exhale with the help of a pipe or with the help of a straw, sorry. So blow it into the lime water present in the second beaker. Okay, so this is how we can compare between two beakers. So now what will happen, the second beaker, the lime water of present in the second beaker, that will turn milky. How it turns milky? Because we have blown the air that we are exhaling, that air has mixed with the lime water present in the second beaker. So as it has mixed with the lime water and it contains carbon dioxide, so it has made the water or lime water in the second beaker milky. Carbon dioxide makes uh, lime water milky. Milky means a whitish, the, it, the color changes into whitish color. Okay. So the first beaker where you have not blown uh, uh, the air or you have not exhaled the air, the lime water remains constantly, remains the same. But in the second beaker where you have just exhaled the air, there the lime water turns milky. So this is what um, this is this experiment proved that the air that we exhale it contains high amount or high quantity of carbon dioxide, high percentage of carbon dioxide. Okay, this is very easy. You can do it yourself in your own home. You can do it. There is no risk in performing this experiment. The next part you can see here is types of respiration. I have already told you about this that there are two types of respirations, that is breathing and cellular respiration. Now, the, the, there are two types of cellular respiration also. One is aerobic respiration, another is anaerobic respiration. Simple thing is the aerobic respiration means the respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen, but in the absence of oxygen, that means when oxygen is not present there, then also respiration can take place. Respiration means what? Respiration means from the nutrient, uh, from the food that we are eating, we are getting the nutrient. From the nutrients, when we are breaking down those nutrients to extract the energy from it. Our main purpose of eating food is to get the energy, right? This is why we eat food. This is what we all know. And 
if we want to stay alive, we need the energy. Without energy, we can't stay alive. We can't, can't survive. So we break down the foods into uh, to the nutrients and then we break down the nutrients to get the energy. We can break down the nutrients by the oxidation reaction. That means in the presence of oxygen. That reaction or that respiration is called aerobic respiration. Why? Because oxygen is present here. You can see when oxygen is present here, that respiration will be called aerobic respiration. But we can also extract or we can also produce energy when oxygen is not present there. That is called anaerobic respiration. Now, two types of anaerobic respirations are there. One that is one type of anaerobic respiration that is given here that glucose is making carbon dioxide plus alcohol plus energy. This uh, we can see only in case of yeast cells. Okay, yeast is one kind of um, single celled uh, microorganism or fungus. So single celled fungus, it contains only one cell. So this kind of anaerobic respiration that is shown here in your book, it happens in yeast cells. Okay, yeast can uh, perform this kind of anaerobic respiration. But in our body, in the body of other animals also, anaerobic respiration takes place. But in that case, here in yeast, yeast cell, you will see that glucose is making carbon dioxide, alcohol, and energy. It happens only in yeast cells. But in our body, if there is a lack of oxygen, if there is not enough oxygen, glucose will also make the energy. But at the same time, it will also make lactic acid. So in the absence of oxygen in our body, glucose will convert into lactic acid plus energy. Okay. So this is, these are the two types of anaerobic respiration. In the yeast cell, we will see that in the absence of oxygen, glucose will uh, convert into or glucose will produce carbon dioxide, alcohol and energy. But in our body, the glucose will convert into lactic acid and energy. Okay, so this is what happens. These are the two types. So just think from the very start, very beginning, two types of respirations are there, breathing and or breathing or external respiration and cellular respiration or internal respiration. Now two types of cellular respirations are there. One is anaerobic respiration, another is aerobic respiration. Now this anaerobic respiration, there are also two different types of respiration. One happens only in the body, in, the, in, the, in yeast cells, that makes or produces carbon dioxide, alcohol and energy. And another type of anaerobic respiration, it occurs in our body, our cell, that gives that gives um, rise to or that produces lactic acid plus energy. Is it clear or not? Up yes, ma'am. Ma'am, both Don't two types of anaerobic respiration are happen by without oxygen. Anaerobic respiration and means without. Okay, anaerobic that means without air. Anaerobic means without oxygen and aerobic means in the presence of oxygen. Okay, so I'm um, uh, just keep uh, just remember this one. So respiration. You tell me, I will not tell. How many types of respirations are there? Ma'am, two types of. No, first one is breathing. Ma'am, breathing and cellular respiration. Ma'am, yes, cellular and respiration of two types. One is cellular or internal respiration. Okay. Yes. Second one is cellular or internal respiration. Ma'am, cellular are respiration are of two types. Ma'am, anaerobic and aerobic. In breathing. Anaerobic and aerobic. No, in breathing, we can see inhalation. I'm internal breathing. I'm and breathing, inhalation, and exhalation. 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 Okay, so in breathing, we can see inhalation and exhalation. 
Now wow. in cellular respiration, there are two Anaerobic. types of cellular respiration. Wow. Anaerobic. 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 Okay. Now Anaerobic. in anaerobic, anaerobic respiration, we can see are, there are two types of anaerobic respiration. In one kind of anaerobic respiration, lactic acid will be produced. And in another kind of anaerobic respiration, Ma alcohol lactic acid will is be produced, produced in human body. No, in, human body in, in all the other animals. Because alcohol will be produced only in, in yeast cells. Okay. Due to anaerobic respiration. Okay. So up to this, for today, you mark up to this. I hope your concept, basic concept is clear. Now we will read in uh, details about some other topics, but in tomorrow's class, not today. Okay, because today's class time is all.